Good morning, hope you're having an awesome day. I'm gonna be showing you how to create an Instagram carousel with animation in After Effects. So first up, I'm just gonna show you an example of what I did. So you can see on one of my last slides on my Instagram, you'll see that I have this. So if I press spacebar and play it from the start, you can see I have this cool animation, you got the photo coming in, you got the text animated and the icons. Really smooth, really interesting, makes it more engaging with your audience. And yeah, it, it just makes it a lot nicer and cooler. So I also have another example of what I did as well. Did this cool fire uh, effects, fireworks effect, which is pretty cool. So I learned how to do that yesterday. Um, had fun doing that, but I'm not gonna show you how to do that. It's a bit more complicated. So we'll just stick with this. So first up, what you wanna do is you wanna go to file and you wanna go to new. So you'll start a new project or for this case, if you're already in After Effects, you can just go right click in your project section. So if you go to window and you can open the project section by um, going to project down the bottom here. So I'm double click there. So you can see on the left hand side, I got all these, all my files here. You can right click and click new composition. So in After Effects, you've got compositions, which pretty much means like a, your document or your workspace that you're going to be uh, like you know editing and stuff like that similar to premiere a little bit but premiere doesn't have comps um you know they got they call them you know bins and, and other things and sequences so you can see here i'm just going to call it instagram um tutorial for now and you can see i want to make the sizing 1080 by 1080 and it's going to be square pixels that's fine the frame weight, you can leave it on 25, that is fine as well. Um, but obviously you can increase it to probably 30. Um, and the duration, yep, you can leave it on four. If you wanna change the duration, you can change it to like five seconds. I think four seconds is fine as well. So I'll just leave it at four seconds and I'm just gonna press okay. Everything else is fine. Make sure your caps lock is off so you can see. And so Typically what I have now is if you if you want to change the color of the background what you can do is you can go to composition and go to comp settings. The shortcut key is actually control K. So if I don't like the background color you can see I use black for my Instagram carousel so I left it but if you want to change it you just click on that and what you can do is you can change the color so you can see in the background it's actually changing. So whatever your brand color is you can put the hex code in this bar here and you can actually select the color you want. I'm gonna leave it for, on black or charcoal for now because that's what I love doing. And that's my, uh, my identity. So what I'm gonna do now is start to add some text. So I'm gonna press T for the type tool. So I'm, I think it's actually a different shortcut key to Illustrator. So you can go to the top left, click on the type tool. So it's actually control T. And I'm gonna left click once and start to type in. Um, so I want to grow with Instagram um, and then I can do enter comments below right so what I'm gonna do is I have my character window on the right hand side here so you can see I can select my font so I'm gonna press Control a select all this go to BW stretch and I'm gonna click black and then what you can actually do is hopefully you can see what's happening here but um, you can see I can change the sizing, so I can just left click and drag. So you can see it should increase the size there. And then I'm gonna press enter on the right hand side of my keyboard and that like makes it, you have to press enter or else if you press escape, it will, it will cancel the action you just applied. So I have the text here, which is really cool. And then if I wanna bring in any other images, what you do in Illustrator, you can just save it uh, out as a PNG. So if I zoom in here, you can see I have my arrow here and I also have my little speech bubble. So what I do is I duplicate it. I make a little artboard about, you know, this one's 644 pixels. You can just make it a small artboard, doesn't matter. Just make it a square, whatever it is. And then what I'll do, so you can see I've got my shape here and my arrow here. What I'll do is then save these as a PNG. So I showed you in the other tutorial how to do that. So you can select these, save as a PNG. And once you do that, you just literally get that and drag it into After Effects. So because I already have my comp from the last one, you can see I already have it in the files here. So 
if I open this, you can see I've got the two items here. So if I drag this down into my layers on the bottom, you'll see I just dropped that PNG in there. So I'll just close that. So what I do, I can click on the layer, press enter and call it circle. So I can rename as you can see in the bottom here, bottom left corner. And what I can do is just left click and drag. All your tools are on the top left corner so I can use the selection tools there. So I'm just gonna have it somewhere here in the bottom. And then I press enter. Uh, or you can click onto another layer and it should select the other layer. And I'm going to get the arrow as well. So I'll rename this arrow and I'll bring it down here like this. I can also get text and put like created by Jeremy Muir if I want, but I'll just, you know, keep it chilled. And then I'll drag the other p transparent PNG of me like this. And then you can see how it's behind the text. I don't want that. So what you do in the bottom left corner, um, I'll just name these guys layers so you guys can see. So what I can do is drag this layer. So you just click on where the word is and just left click and drag up. And now you can see my face is on top of the text there, as you can see, which is super cool. So now we're going to add some animation. So I actually use a plugin called Animation Composer. If I actually go online, Composer, you can see it's um, MrHorse.tv and they have this plugin called Animation Composer and it's pretty cheap as well. So you can invest in that if you want to. I think it's like 50 bucks or something, but they have a lot of other like transitions as well, like super, um, super cool stuff. So products, you can see, oh, they've got new products for Premiere Pro now, which is interesting. Premiere Composer, so that's nice. It's everything's pre-made for you, so you don't have to do it from scratch. So literally what I'll do, I'll select my layer, I'll select my image, I just left click. I'll go to Animation Composer on the right and find a transition preset. So I'll find 2D layer transitions. I'll go to maybe fade and position. I'll select the first one, which is phase, uh, ease fade and position. So you can see on the right, it's giving me a preview of what it's doing. So I can select this. And then all I do is select which one. Do I want it from the bottom, the left, the right, the top? I want this one specifically from the right. So my portrait's gonna come from the right and slide in. So I drag this. And on the right hand side, you can see I'm clicking and dragging it into this first section, which says apply as in. So I let go, and now you can see on my layer, on the bottom, it says TR. It means it's added that effect that I selected into the in part of the of these two things. So if I select it, you can see it's sliding in now automatically, which is really cool. And also I can go into the layers and like edit the effects if I want. Um, but to be honest, I typically just leave it. So if you want to edit the position or opacity, you can you can change that. If I don't want the effect anymore, I go to the right hand side and you can see you can click on remove as well. So I accidentally put on the text and you can see I removed it. Make sure you select the layer that you want. So I'll select the text this time and this time I'll go to another transition. So I can go text effect. I can animate lines. So maybe I want fade and position, right? Basic, I got this one. So it's going to come from the left. So I'll select, drop it in the box. Now it automatically has set the text. So if you look here, what's going to happen? I press play, press space bar and it plays. So you can see already I've got this simple animation in a couple of minutes. It makes it really, really handy. So boom, just like that. That's really cool. And then I can do the same thing for the other effects. So I can go here and maybe I want... I'll select the circle come from the left and then the arrow can come from the left as well. So then now if I play it, super easy like this. So if you don't have this plugin and you don't want to purchase it, that's fine. I'm going to show you how to um, quickly do an easy way without doing the animation. So I'll just delete the animation on the text and maybe, maybe the circle icon. So you can see it's just the arrow and that now. So what you can actually do is I can select this image here. And what I want to do, you want to go to your layers panel on the bottom there. And what I'm going to do is find the transform. And you can see what I want to do, I want to bring my point here 
on my timeline. I want to bring my timeline arrow to the start. So what I want to do now is I want to bring this text outside of the frame. So I'm going to hold shift, left click and drag, bring this out of the frame. And I can see because my layer color is red, I can see that it's there. You can change colors by clicking on the little color square right next to the text on the layer. So you can see there, I can change it to peach. I can change it to orange if I want. I can change the other colors as well. Maybe that's yellow, aqua and whatever. So you can make it more neater and stuff. So you can see here my text is the orange one. So if I, and you can also lock this. So I'm going to select it, bring this timeline to the start. I'm going to click this little timer button on position. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag my timeline to about one second. And what I'm going to do now, so if you see in the bottom here, I'm going to drag my position. So you can see it's minus 900. I'm going to drag this. So left click and drag. You can also type it in and bring it all the way to where I want it. Right? So I'm happy with that. So now if I go back to the start and press space bar and play it, you can see it's sliding in. Right? And maybe I want it to fade as well. So what I can do is I can click on the opacity and maybe the opacity starts off at 0%, which is like the transparency. And as it comes out, maybe it goes to 100%. So if I press space bar, so it has more of a fade effect. So you can see like that. So it looks a bit, uh, you know, stagnant, stale. So what I'm actually going to do to make it a bit more smoother is I'm going to uh, easy ease it. So I can select these two. You can see all these animation points. It's like a little diamond shape. I can select it and typically I'll right click and you can go keyframe assistant and you've got some shortcuts here. You see F9 and what I can do is I can do easy ease or easy ease in. So this should make it a little bit smoother. So you can see how the animation is a lot more smoother than before. It sort of like builds up gradually. If I go to the graph editor, you can see here how it has a gradual, the graph editor, you press this button, it's more gradual and before it was more straight. If I, if I turn it off, so if I can go to control Z, you can see before it's straight. And then when we do add the easy ease, easy ease in, you can see that it's got like a curve to it, which makes it more smooth as you can see there. And you'll pretty much apply, do the same thing for the um, the object. So I can do the same thing for this shape. So I'll press P for the shortcut for position. Go to the start of the timeline, press position. Bring this out of the frame. Bring to one second and bring the position up like this. And then I'll select the two panels and go easy in. And you can see there it's sliding in like that. You can do the same thing for the arrow as well and it'll be fine. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to quickly um, save it now. So what I do is I go to file, I go to export and I go to add to media encoder. So to do this well, you'll need Adobe media encoder instead of just um, Adobe After Effects. So because what you want to do, you want to save it as an MP4 and it doesn't let you allow you to do this in After Effects. You can only save it as an AVI. If you're on a Mac, you can save it as a QuickTime. That should work as well. But for me personally, I like saving it as a um, MP4. So it should add it to the queue. So you can see it's added it. So what I typically do, I click on this text here and it allows me to select it. So I do 1080p. And because maybe I want to upload this video to YouTube or some other place, I typically do 1080p and I do um, 15 megabytes, which um, megabits. And the you can see the width, the, because the composition is already at the size you want, 1080p, you can see that it, the width and the height is that, which is super cool. So that's really cool. Uh, compress OK and the preset is fine. And all you have to do is just locate it so I can save it to the desktop for now. Um, and I press OK, save, and then I press play, and it should export it. It shouldn't take long because it's only a couple seconds long. And then what I'll do, I'll go to my desktop, double click it, boom, there we have it, our animation. And all you have to do is when you do the carousel, you upload, I'll upload this to Dropbox, download it on my phone, and from that, I'll just upload it normally as I'll do an image, 
and then it should automatically play or you press the screen and it will play for you at, when you upload it to Instagram. So yeah, I hope this tutorial was helpful and getting that animation and visual effects to make the, your content more interesting and engaging, especially for carousels. And then once you learn this, you can use it for YouTube and other you know platforms as well. So like, comment and subscribe if you did enjoy the content and I'll put some more tutorials out there to help you guys win. So yeah, take it easy and I'll catch you in the next one.